Good morning everyone, especially you Ali that has been waiting for this video. I'm TJ and today I will show you how to run a nonlinear buckling analysis in NX SOL 106. I will use an example from Pavel Gonshrov's book Engineering Analysis with NX Advanced Simulation Section 2.2 Part 2. And uh, this is basically the same as example as I used in my linear buckling video where I demoed NX SOL 105. In this video, you will learn how to run an initial SOL 106 nonlinear static analysis, how to apply buckling loads and boundary conditions. That means how to also include imperfections in your model in order to provoke buckling. Then you will run nonlinear buckling in NX SOL 106 and calculate the critical buckling loads. Uh, the tasks are first to run a nonlinear -lin buckling analysis to estimate the critical buckling load uh, which we found in the previous video to be 3031 Newton and that's based on the assumption that the model is linear and then you usually overestimate the buckling load and I will show you that's true in this example as well. Then I will run an initial nonlinear static analysis to identify a close to buckling load and I will run a nonlinear buckling analysis to identify the critical buckling factor. And I will show you that you can calculate the critical buckling load by this equation, where P critical is the applied load, and this load must be in uh, close to the in a narrow region of the buckling load, close to the critical buckling load. And then the system will calculate the alpha factor for you, the critical buckling factor. And delta P is the incremental load, which is uh, basically the applied load divided by the number of increments. And uh, I will show you how to run these analysis in NX SOL 106. So stay tuned. This is the strap FE model that I used in my linear uh, buckling analysis in NX SOL 105 shown in a previous video. In order to run a nonlinear uh, buckling analysis in NX SOL 106 and account for plasticity, I need to change my material properties. So I go to my thin shell collector and I want to edit this one. And here is my linear material model and I want to copy this one. And I can call it non-linear. So the next thing I'll do, I want to add my initial yield point, which is for this material 216.1 megapascal. And then I have to give a stress strain uh, curve uh, that describes the nonlinear behavior of this material. And I use a field table field for that purpose and um, I can give it a name buckling and then I have to define the dependency and it's strain, strain stress versus strain and here I can add the values uh, column wise but I want to import it from file and I have a comma separated file here CSV file which ex gives me my stress strain uh, values and here they are. You see that the initial yield point is 269.1. So this must correspond to the parameter I gave in the other field. This one. Okay, then I've given uh, my nonlinear material properties and I'm fine. Um, and then here in uh, I've selected my nonlinear material and the default thickness is the same. And then I can call my collector nonlinear. So there I am. Now I change my material properties and I can uh, set up my sim new simulation file. I right click on my FEM file and I create a new simulation accept the default name and um, let's specify the solver which is 106 
non-linear statics, global constraints. And um, I'm going to do a non-linear analysis. That means I have to include large displacements, not only plasticity. So I switch on the LG disp option. That's okay. And then I go to the case control and I specify non-linear parameters. And here I want to select the number of increments because I have to apply a buckling load incrementally. And let's try 20 increments. And when you do nonlinear analysis, and especially buckling, you want to show the results for each iteration. So I select all here. And then I use uh, iterations before update. When you run a buckling analysis, uh, you are searching for buckling loads in a narrow area and then I want to s update my stiffness matrix for each iteration. So I use one there. So now I have my nonlinear parameters set up. That's fine. Um, what I will do now is to first run a nonlinear static analysis because I want to identify a close to critical buckling load. Uh, that means I want to apply the compression load incrementally until something happens and the simulation stops. Then I know something has happened and it's more likely that it's buckling than yielding when I put on a, uh, on a load, compression load uh, with an imperfection. If I want to study uh, after buckling or post buckling behavior, I need to switch on arc length methods. Uh, but in this simulation, I just want to find the buckling load, not what happens after the buckling. So I press OK here. Um, then I have to go to this subcase and I have to actually change or edit uh, the settings here. So I use my output requests, my nonlinear parameters that I selected. And here I don't, don't specify any kind of uh, simulation type I use the default settings because I'm not running a buckling load initially or an, an buckling analysis I just want to run a nonlinear static analysis so then I create some loads I ac apply a load in uh, this point and what I do now is that I remember that my linear buckling load was estimated to 3031 newtons I now want to apply a load which is higher than the buckling load because I want to uh, provoke the system. I want to make sure that a buckling occur. So I select, for example, a load of 3,400 newtons here. And I have to specify the direction. So I use two points and I can use... Uh, it's always a bit tricky to pick the right center point there. Okay, and this one. Uh, okay, then I've selected two points, which gives me a correct direction of the compression load. So I press OK or apply. Then, uh, in order to get buckling, you need to apply some kind of imperfection to your model. And uh, in this situation, I haven't applied any kind of geometric imperfection. So I need to put some kind of eccentric load, uh, which uh, gives me a perturbation that initiate the buckling behavior. Otherwise, I would only have compression forces, compression strain, uh, which finally will give me a complete yield and plasticity of the whole cross-section. So I select uh, a few nodes here in the middle of the beam, roughly. There we are. And I want to put some transverse loads on. So let's select uh, set direction. And then I just uh, specify a very small load which can initiate the buckling. One Newton should be enough. There we are. So this is my buckling load. I could give it the name buckling or compression. Forgot to do that. And then I can specify that I want to display it in a proper way. So I edit display, expanded, scale, OK. So here you see my compression load, which is 3400 newtons applied in 20 increments. Uh, and then I have um, 
the perturbation load that will give me the buckling behavior. Uh, then I only need the constraints, new constraint, fixed, and I will clamp this end. Then I have a simulation setup that accounts for plasticity due to the nonlinear materials and also large displacements and, and I've applied an imperfection that will give me buckling and I'm ready to run the simulation. Then we run the nonlinear um, SOL106 solution, nonlinear static solution, in order to spot uh, a close to buckling, critical buckling load. Because we want to initiate or identify the load level where uh, something collapses, probably due to buckling. And there we are. And we can check the results. Here you can see that we have been running 20 iterations and we also see that um, we haven't been able to apply the complete load. We have a load factor of 0 0.889 at the last iteration. So what does that mean? Well, uh, we should apply a load factor of 1. Uh, that means when we run with 20 increments we will apply or increase the load factor with 0 0.05. Uh, for each in increments. That means that the simulation is failing between 0 0.85 and 0 0.9. And if you multiply uh, the applied load 3400 with uh, 0 0.85 you get 2890 newtons. And if you multiply the applied load with 0 0.9 you got 3060 newtons. That means the simulation is failing somewhere between 2,800 and 3,000 newtons. Uh, <coughs> and that's where we want to start the, the search for, for buckling. So we have to be in a narrow nonlinear region in order to spot the critical buckling load. We could of course also s uh, animate this um, behavior because when you do a nonlinear buckling or a nonlinear analysis you can apply or show the stresses for each iteration. So let's specify an animation for these iterations. And this is just in order to check that we we have a kind of buckling behavior. And you know the direction of the compressive force, it's in the x direction. And we see that the displacement is actually in the z direction. That means the applied loads and the deformation vector are orthogonal which means that we are not doing any kind of work, which is typical for a buckling behavior. So let's then set up the buckling analysis. Then we go to the sim file and we create a new solution. And it's also of the type SOL106 nonlinear statics global constraints. And we want to choose bulk data, we want to include large displa displacement effects together with the plasticity. Uh, then we go to the case control and we have um, nonlinear parameters. We can use the same as uh, on the other simulation. We use 20 increments. We want to I I update the stiffness matrix for each iteration and we want to print results for all iterations. That's okay. Um, as I said, we could run a post buckling uh, analysis as well, but then we had to use the arc length method. But that's not of interest right now. We could also call the solution buckling. Okay. Uh, then we, in this subcase, we have to edit it. And we have to select the output requests, the nonlinear parameters, and then in the eigenvalue analysis option here, we use buckling. Lanchos is okay, and I think the default settings uh, are okay in this example. So then we have to apply some boundary conditions. We can use the fixed constraints. 
from the from the initial nonlinear analysis and then we could um, actually also use the same loads just drag it and drop them to this simulation let's uh, change the display okay there we are but we want to change this compression compression load we are not we don't want to use 3400 but we will use 3400 multiply with the load factor that we have before anything happens and that is 0 0.85 and um, that gives us uh, roughly 2890 newtons but we start a little bit lower so let's start the search at 2800 newtons the direction is the same uh, then we know that when we further apply more loads in order to provoke buckling uh, we are in a narrow nonlinear region, so we should be able to spot the critical buckling load. And uh, there we are. And we can go to the buckling solution and we can solve the simulation. Well, first we have to activate these. Let's sure they are active. Constraints as well. And then we solve. The solution takes a few minutes and then we can check the results. And here we have um, 20 iterations and for each iteration we can actually check the results, the strains, displacements and stresses because in a nonlinear buckling analysis you apply loads and that enables you to post-process the usual FE results for each iteration. You can also uh, visualize the different uh, buckling modes here. But what we want to do is to check uh, something called the critical buckling factor. And um, I'll show you where you find that one. Here it's the FO6 file for my solution. And if I search for the critical buckling factor, I will find it in the text file here. I notice the buckling factor alpha is 1.1795 and let's remember that value. Um, assuming that we are searching uh, for the critical buckling load in a narrow nonlinear region we can assume that the tangential stiffness matrix is proportional to the external load and that means we can calculate the buckling load the following way and I've prepared a spreadsheet. The critical buckling load is equal to the applied load, which was 2800, plus the alpha factor, which was 1.1795, multiplied with the load increment. And the load increment is the applied load divided by the number of increments that we set up in the simulation, which was 20. That means the load increment is 140 newtons. And that gives us a total critical buckling load of 2965 newtons and if we compare that value to the buckling load we found using SOL 105 with, which is the linear buckling and that one was 3031 newtons so we can see that the linear buckling analysis uh, overestimated the buckling loads slightly 3031 versus the nonlinear critical buckling load found to be 2965. So that concludes my presentation on nonlinear buckling. Thanks for watching.